William Morris was a socialist, not of the armchair, even of the merely writing sort, but as an active propagandist who taught himself to address street corner meetings. This was about the only thing that he did badly, because it went against the grain. He did it because he had been led by the belief in the need for arts founded purely on the common life of the people, to regard as necessary a revolution in the entire way of living and in the entire relation of man to man in contemporary society, and saw no hope of good art or happy living except in a society of friends and equals, based on cooperative effort in production and on common enjoyment of the fruits of labor. To his creed he was led at first largely by John Ruskin, whose theories of art and society deeply influenced him. But he developed these ideas in his own way, by relating them directly to his own experience as a practitioner in many crafts. Up to the late 1870s, Morse had taken no part in politics. But in 1876, he was drawn suddenly into political activity by his disapproval of Disraeli's handling of the Eastern question. When the immediate question was settled, he became in 1879 treasurer of a National Liberal League, which was formed largely out of the Eastern Question Association to ginger up the Liberal Party and get it to adopt a more advanced social policy. In 1881, a group of radicals, headed by H.M. Heinemann, formed the Democratic Federation and was the pioneer in Great Britain of Marxian socialism. Morris joined the Democratic Federation in 1883. Liberty, equality, fraternity was the old watchword of the revolutionaries of 1789. Educate, agitate, organize was the new motto of the rising socialist movement. Soon after Morris joined, the Democratic Federation became the Social Democratic Federation and adopted a full-blooded socialist policy, with his cordial approval. Morris set to work to study economics and read Marx's Capital, but found it heavy going, except the historical chapters, which he greatly admired. Morris at once became a leading figure in the Democratic Federation, and almost at once he collaborated with Heinemann in a book in which they set out their socialist principles. Before long, there was a split in the Federation, mainly between those who wished to put up socialist candidates for Parliament and those who held that the first business should be socialist education and that contesting parliamentary seats could lead to no good result at any rate until socialism had won wider working class support. Hyman led the former group and Morris the latter. At the end of 1884, Morris's group left the SDF and founded a new body, the Socialist League. The Hammersmith branch of the new league met at Kelmscott House. The Socialist League started a new paper, the Commonweal, in rivalry to the SDS paper, Justice, with which Morris had been closely connected. Morris edited and paid for the new venture, and in it appeared much of the best of his later writing, including his long poem about the Paris Commune of 1871 called The Pilgrims of Hope, and his best-known book of all, The Socialist Utopia called News from Nowhere. He remained at the head of the Socialist League until 1890, when it was captured by anarchists, who drove him from the editorship and caused him to resign from the League. He then, to a great extent, retired from active politics, but he founded the Hammersmith Socialist Society, based on the previous League branch, and Kelmscott House, where this body met, remained up to the time of his last illness, a place of pilgrimage for active socialists and artists of many different schools of thought.